The heart of an ancient forest is never a good place to let your guard down. However, despite the party being on full alert, something has gotten the drop on them. A figure darts out from the shadows, slashing at the party's ranger. And just as quickly as it appeared, it's gone. You turn to the ranger to see if she's okay, only to be met with a wicked smile beginning to purse her lips. Roll initiative. Welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of D&D and other related tabletop games and bring them to light for use in your 5th edition campaign. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today marks the final day of our spooky themed monsters for Halloween. This year I've saved my personal favorite for last, the big day itself. It's a monster whose name you may have heard before, it is the Wendigo. As far as D&D goes, this creature can be found in 4th edition's Demonomicon, a great book full of cool monsters with an almost impossible to say name. However, what may not come as a surprise to anyone who's heard the term Wendigo before, this creature is not exclusive to D&D. Like many of their creatures, it's inspired by folk tales and legends from other cultures around the world. The Wendigo in particular comes from an old Algonquin folk tale. The legend basically states that whenever someone was guilty of being particularly greedy, exercising somewhat evil behavior in general, or more specifically was involved with cannibalism, they would turn into a wendigo, a savage cannibalistic killing machine. More specifically, the spirit of a wendigo would take over their body and morph them terribly in its image. But we'll get more into this later on in the video. First, we're going to talk about just what these things can do in battle, some ways that we're going to change them up a little bit, and then of course we'll get to some plot hooks and some different ways you can use this creature in your game. To start things off here, these creatures are of medium size and they can move 40 feet, which is a little bit faster than most other creatures. Generally, their end goal is tearing their opponents limb from limb for later consumption. However, getting to that goal, they usually take a slightly less direct route. They love causing fear and confusion amongst their enemies and their abilities reflect that very well. The Wendigo has a trait called Scent of Fear. Essentially, this is an aura that extends 50 feet in a giant circle around the Wendigo. Any creatures within 50 feet have disadvantage on any and all wisdom saves. You can probably see where this is going. To complement this, the creature has an ability called Inflame the Hungry. It's a ranged attack that can target a creature up to 50 feet away, handily within the radius of the scent of fear, and it causes a pretty substantial amount of psychic damage, or half as much in a successful save. If the creature fails its save, not only does it take a decent amount of damage, but it is now dominated by the Wendigo. And as you can probably guess, the Wendigo is going to force it to use its action to attack the nearest creature every turn. However, this is only the beginning. The Wendigo, of course, has a pretty powerful claw attack, and that's just kind of its default attack damage move but it also has an ability called Cannibal's Bite. It can only use this on a creature who it's already dominated. However, it causes a crazy high amount of damage. The downside, of course, is it allows the dominated creature to then make an additional save as soon as it takes that damage. But if it does manage to break out of the domination, that's fine. The Wendigo is just gonna use its Inflame Hunger ability on someone else the next round. These abilities are all well and good, but when you couple it with the Wendigo's second trait, it becomes deadly. When the Wendigo ends its turn, any creature that it is more than 25 feet away from can't see it. This creature is effectively invisible to you if it ends its turn more than 25 feet away. And this effect lasts until the start of the Wendigo's next turn. So something that might at first seem like just a savage combatant is actually a very crafty and tactical creature that's gonna strike from the shadows and then disappear, dominate its enemies and cause them to fight each other, and then prey on the weaker foes who it's dominated causing a crazy amount of damage. So it is very lethal and excels at controlling the party. Now when it comes to changing up this creature, there's essentially two things that I want to do here. The first of which has to do with the typing on this creature. The book has it written in as a demon, which makes sense. However, I find this creature to have much more of a fey sensibility to it. This is more of a flavor thing, so if you like it as a demon, you can totally just leave it that way. However, we have so few good fey creatures in 5th edition right now, and I think that typing this creature more as a malignant spirit rather than a demon from another plane kind of makes a little bit more sense. Again, mostly a flavor thing. There are very few times this will actually affect battle in a mechanical way, but something to think about when you're running this creature. The second thing is actually an ability that I took from a higher leveled version of this monster in 4th edition. If you're not familiar with 4th edition, most creatures have like four or five different variants of the same thing that are just higher level. And the Wendigo was no exception. The highest level version of the Wendigo was so high level it was almost unusable unless you're in higher tier of play. So rather than convert that one, I just took one of its abilities that I really liked. 
I've changed some of the wording and how it works generally, but at its core, it's essentially the same thing. This is an ability called Feeding Frenzy. It targets everyone within 50 feet of the Wendigo, and it only affects them if they've taken damage, so they can't be at max health. Any creature who is within the 50 feet and isn't at max health makes a Charisma save. Anyone who fails uses the Wendigo's Cannibal's Bite attack against another creature of the Wendigo's choosing. And if they fail that Charisma save by 5 or more, which is very unlikely because they would have to roll 10 or less, then they become dominated. They can only use this power once a day to avoid some obnoxious combat situations. However, the flavor of this I think is great. The Wendigo just kind of chips away at the party a little bit and then unleashes this and watches as they all turn on each other, literally biting at one another. It will definitely lead to some awkward conversations after the party has hopefully defeated the Wendigo. So, when it comes to using this creature in your game, we have the advantage of there already being some folklore developed by real civilizations for us. In fact, in a group of 4 or 5 players, it's very likely that at least one of them is going to have heard about the Wendigo before. This isn't a bad thing though. It's good for the same reason that most people know what a Medusa is. Even if only one party member knows what a Medusa is, they can kind of fill in the other characters generally on what they do. It kind of makes it feel a little bit more real. And of course, it being D&D, who knows how things are going to get mixed up from the legend. So you could just use the legend of the Wendigo and keep it as is. There might be a small forest bordering village and they have this kind of tale whispered amongst the townsfolk that they tell to their children at night to keep them in line. However, of course, this being a world of magic and fantasy, most of those tales come from a very real and scary place. They also make great random encounters if your characters are going through the Feywild. I think they definitely have that weird sense of danger that a lot of the more evil and stranger Fays have, and you could definitely really play up on the cannibalistic element of the Wendigo. Perhaps there's a cultist group that maybe worships a Wendigo out in the forest. They eat other humans or other elves or whatever with the hope that they themselves will become a Wendigo someday. Or maybe you go for a more Hannibal Lecter vibe where you have a small aristocratic group that has these private parties, where of course they dine on forbidden delicacies. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Something else noted that's actually from the legend as well is it's possible to become a Wendigo by forced circumstance. Maybe the creature who became a Wendigo wasn't necessarily a willing one or even a cannibal. Perhaps they used to be an adventurer whose party was stranded out in the desert and everyone else had died except them. So out of a need and want to survive, they consumed one of the dead party members. It's pretty gruesome. But it could give you a different, more tragic take on this if you wanted to go that way. And it's of course possible that a Wendigo might just emerge from the Feywild to try to consume the soul of a particularly greedy party member. Or perhaps you're running a campaign with some not so savory party members who have dined on the flesh of others. All great excuses to throw a Wendigo at them. You could also set it up as sort of a dangerous legend come to life where people always heard of the Wendigo but now they're actually starting to see it in the shadows of night. Then the party has to track it down to its den and all the animals within a few miles are much more ravenous than usual. Maybe you have deer and caribou attacking the party and trying to eat them or something. The Wendigo is all about that perversion of consumption. So any way you can think to weave that theme into the story is going to just accentuate what this creature is all about even more. If you do go the more demonic route with this creature, I think it fits in very well with gnolls. Gnolls are all very much about just mass slaughter and consumption. If you've read Volo's Guide to Monsters, you know exactly what I'm talking about. A Wendigo would make an excellent minion for the demon lord of gnolls. You know who. Or you know who. Yeah, you know who. All of these, I think, would make really cool adventures. And for and it's nice to have a creature where your biggest problem is picking how to throw them at the party. Not for lack of options, but because you have so many options. Anyways, that is all for today's video, so hopefully you enjoyed listening to me talk about this cannibalistic creature. And hopefully you've enjoyed all the spooky, scary monsters that we've done this month. If you did decide to run a Halloween session, whether it was canon, non-canon, one-shot, part of your main story, using some of my creatures or other creatures that you found on your own, please leave a comment here and tell me all about it. Or if you want to actually chat about it, check out the link to Discord below and we'll talk about it there. And while you're perusing those links, you'll also notice we've got a link to Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. And I do have a Patreon set up now as well, so if you'd like to support the channel in that way, please check that out too. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, I appreciate it immensely, and have yourselves a great Halloween. Till next time.